You can be a hero by purchasing a residence in a vault tech vault today. Because if the worst should happen tomorrow, the world is going to need you to build a better day after. The official trailer for the new Fallout TV series, which will drop all eight episodes of its first season on April 11th, opens with the actor Cooper Howard in what looks like an advertisement from the 1950s in our timeline. These are all details that might seem insignificant if you never played a Fallout game, but as someone who has, I can assure you that there are a lot of important details here. I mentioned our timeline because Fallout is set in a universe that diverged from ours sometime after World War II. While the aesthetic is a sort of retro-futuristic 1950s, the commercial would have been shot just before the year 2077, because even though the divergence between the two timelines happened long before that, that's the year the Great War happened, and the world became the way it looks in most of this trailer. Even though millions of people are familiar with the Fallout games, which have been around for over 25 years at this point, I'm going to gear this video toward people who aren't fanatics about the lore. Partially because the TV adaptation is going to introduce a lot of new people to the universe, but also because I played the games for fun. Up until the show's first season was announced, I wasn't studying this stuff. And so even though I played all the games and an embarrassing amount of Fallout 76 lately, my channel is about TV shows and I plan to evaluate the new series as one of those first and foremost. So if you've never found yourself hopelessly over-encumbered with a bunch of junk you don't want to drop, this should still give you an idea of what to expect. But at the same time, the reason I keep going back to these games is that the post-apocalyptic world they created is a fun place to run around in. It can be goofy, but doesn't get too inane, which is something that wouldn't really work for me without the lore that makes it feel like a version of the real world that could exist. These two things work really good together, and the games have that and a lot more. Based on this great looking trailer, it looks like the show might too. The official logline from Prime Video says the show is based on one of the greatest video game series of all time, Fallout, which it describes as the story of haves and have-nots in a world in which there's almost nothing left to have. 200 years after the apocalypse, the gentle denizens of luxury Fallout shelters are forced to return to the irradiated hellscape their ancestors left behind, and are shocked to discover an incredibly complex, gleefully weird, and highly violent universe waiting for them. For a casual player who came to the series through the later games, that sounds pretty spot on to me. As does the introduction of the main character, who is played by Yellow Jackets alum Ella Purnell. The majority of the games in the series revolve around the Vault Dweller's experience after they leave their vault, and the trailer introduces us to Lucy from Vault 33, who is in the process of doing that. I won't get into the backstory of what is really going on with the vaults or anything else, because that might turn out to be spoiler territory for the show's telling, and the point of view of the characters is what's important for that. As the logline hinted, Vault Dwellers lived shielded lives that were much different than the people who didn't have a space in one. If the name didn't give it away, the Great War was a global thermonuclear one. In the game series alternate timeline, the United States and China fought a decade-long war over the Earth's depleting resources that culminated with the Chinese launching nukes at the U.S. who then retaliated in kind. While the actual exchange only lasted two hours, it led to wide-ranging devastating effects across the globe. There were billions of casualties, a complete collapse of governments, climate disruption, and radiation contamination, while the planet was turned into a wasteland in short order. People who secured spaces in the vaults prior to October 23rd, 2077 were able to seek shelter in them when the bomb started to fall on that day. That brings us back to Cooper Howard, who by the time Lucy leaves the vault has become a ghoul. Ghoulification is something that happens to people who are exposed to radiation, and a high percentage of those go feral and become the wildly attacking creatures that you run into when you're playing the game. Post-war, Howard's character is actually referred to as the ghoul, and it all feels a little ironic since in his past life as an actor, he was selling the idea of the safety of the vaults. In the commercial, he tells us he wants to show us a wonderful place, a veritable Camelot of the nuclear age. And when he gets to the part where he clarifies that they're not built by God Almighty, but the working man, even if you've never played a second of any of the games, your BS detector should probably start going off. 
As happy as Kyle McLaughlin's character looks standing amongst the other dwellers in Vault 33, there are other shots that pop up later that promise everything isn't always that wholesome. The ghoul, who's played by Walter Goggins, so maybe we should call him Goolgins, sums up the Fallout dynamic later when he says, When you look out at this wasteland, it looks like chaos. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. And that's complicated nicely by the character Maximus, who says that in the new world that Lucy is discovering, everyone wants to save the world, they just disagree on how. This hints at the presence of factions, which is another hallmark of the games. In the absence of nation-states and centralized governments, different groups with varied goals fill that gap. And one thing that jumped out right away about this trailer was the presence of the NCR that fans of the lore of the series will likely be relieved to see. This was a question that came up when it was announced that the show was returning to California where the series began after most of the more recent games took place on the East Coast. New Vegas was the exception to that and featured an NCR that had grown into a federal republic consisting of the states that made up Southern California. By the time that game takes place, the leader who was responsible for most of their expansion in its most noble period of trying to spread democracy and the rule of law had been dead for decades. There was a change of direction after that, but California was still their domain and the center of their government was located in their capital that was located in the fictional city Shady Sands. Having recently played the first game in the series, this name popped out at me right away because it's one of the first locations you visit when you leave the vault. I'm not 100% sure what this sign means because it's for a library and there's a big crater behind it, which could all just be stuff that has been like that for a really long time. It may be unrelated to this current status of the NCR. And for the same reason of spoilers that I don't want to get too much into the history of the vaults, I also don't want to get too much into the history of the Brotherhood of Steel, who we see clashing with the NCR in this trailer. The Brotherhood generally play major roles in the stories of the games, and it's not surprising to see them feature in the show because, let's face it, their power armor looks cool. Especially in that they appear to have recreated it practically rather than relying on CGI here. Their airship also looks impressive, as its counterpart did in Fallout 4. This one has a different name, according to Vanity Fair, that also comes from Arthurian legend, which might be an interesting detail about who these soldiers serve, or could just be a nod to folks who played the games, which is something that there are plenty of in this trailer. The bobbleheads, the vault tech jumpsuits, and, well, everything vault tech really. The mutated creatures, the chems, the dog a la dog meat, the rad roaches, Mr. Handies, and the list goes on. It would be easier to point out the things that don't look like they came straight from the game rather than trying to list them all off. And as mentioned, they all look pretty fantastic. As far as the in-world politics involved with what we're seeing, it's a little harder to speculate on. The games have multiple possible endings, and the story of the show does take place after they've all concluded. I can say that I was invited to an online press screening of the trailer this week that featured Jonathan Nolan, the showrunners, Ella Purnell, and Aaron Moten, who plays Maximus. They didn't give very many details about where the story's going, but Jonathan Nolan especially seems to be someone who was really caught up in playing the games. He mentioned Fallout 3 specifically and said that he lost a year of his life to it and that it almost ended his career. So while they might not be as rigid or as purist as some people would like to see them be, I did come away from that with the feeling that they are doing a sincere job of trying to recreate the themes and the things that make Fallout Fallout. As a Twin Peaks nerd, I was excited to see Cal McLaughlin was involved, and he plays Lucy's father, Hank, who holds the top job of overseer in Vault 33. From the character description, she also has a younger brother named Hank, who's played by Moises Arias. We hear her say, the mission of the vault should be important to everyone, to come up to the surface one day and restart civilization. Having been born there, that's the story she would have been taught from an early age. And suffice it to say that from her sheltered existence, she's in for a shock when she starts exploring the wasteland and meeting people who live out there and try to survive. We get a taste of that when she runs into Michael Emerson's character, Wilzig. 
who basically tells her she needs to go back into the vault because she's not made for the world up there. This is another actor that I was happy to see, and his suggestion that she turn around does bring up the question of why she's there in the first place. The different vaults don't necessarily operate in the same way, and the protagonists in each of the games have different reasons for wanting to leave them. There is a vague sense that Lucy is going to look for someone, and because Fallout 3 was about a dweller going to look for his father, it doesn't seem likely that they'll remix that concept. I guess I should clarify that the show isn't a retelling of one of the Fallout games' stories, but a standalone tale in the same universe. Basically, they're applying the same approach that the sequels do each time they release a new one. We do know that Lucy will encounter the ghoul, who has become a bounty hunter in the 200 or so years he's been living in the wasteland. He also appears to be relying on chems, or drugs if you prefer the real world nomenclature, and the actor has mentioned that he uses a lot of them because he thinks it stops him from becoming one of the mindless, nasty, feral ghouls that run around attacking everything. I kind of touched on this, but the radiation they're exposed to has a lot of negative effects that you see in the loss of the nose and skin deterioration, and in many cases, ghouls lose their minds to the point that they resemble zombies, but they also become radiation resistant and have a massively extended lifespan. So there can be an upside to ghoulification, even if it comes with the constant fear that you could go feral at any time. We do see some footage outside of the commercial of his life before the war. In one shot, we see him at Vault 4, which isn't a vault that was ever mentioned in any of the games, and we see him there with his wife. Now, it's totally possible that this is just part of filming the commercial, because later we see him running with what I presume is his daughter as the bombs are going off. Goggins wasn't at the press conference, but he did make a pre-recorded message where he introduced the character, and he explained that the ghoul in some ways is like the poet Virgil in Dante's Inferno. He's the guide, if you will, through this irradiated hellscape that we find ourselves in in this post-apocalyptic world. He's a bounty hunter, he's pragmatic, he's ruthless, he has his own set of moral codes, and he has a wicked sense of humor. He goes on that he's a very, very, very complicated guy, and to understand him, you have to understand the person that he was before the war. So this character is going to work as the bridge between the worlds. The world before the war and the one after. And of course he's a great actor, so it was good to see that he was involved in the first place. But his description here really got me excited about this character. And the trailer pretty much got me excited about the whole thing. The one drawback and the one thing that kind of took the wind out of my sails was that they're going to be releasing all the episodes at the same time. I was really looking forward to covering this week to week, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that chance. We are going to get to head out into the wasteland once again though, and this time we can just sit back and watch it all go down. The visual language of the later games is part of what sucked me in, and I realize this may be an unpopular opinion from players who've been around since the beginning, but I think it works well and seems like a natural progression from the intro scenes from the early games that are arguably the best looking thing they had going. In today's environment, I also like the weirdness because there are plenty of dusty, dark, post-apocalyptic worlds to choose from if that's your thing. I enjoy the uniqueness, the satire, and the humor, and think it makes a lot of sense for the show to feel like an extension of that. The return to the 50s style at the end of the 21st century is more than an aesthetic, and there's a lot for the show to explore in that area, which it seems like they'll be doing based on the vault Tech commercial. Plus, it's a big world out there, and the bombs cleared out a lot of room in it. The game spanned a time frame of a little more than two centuries after the war, and as mentioned, the show takes place after the previous stories, but isn't that far removed. It takes place nine years after Fallout 4, which took place ten years after Fallout 3. As far as the vault stories are concerned, there are still plenty of those available. There were supposed to be 122 vaults total, and I believe only about 40 of those have been visited or referred to in all the games. If I was excited before, I am more excited after watching this. I'll definitely be coming out with a video as soon as I see it. And who knows, maybe we'll even run into each other in Appalachia. And I think that is a great place to leave things. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.